Hey there, welcome to the Uplift Board. We got a great show for you today. Great cast of characters as well. You know I always say that, including these. A woman dedicated to editing and writing Wikipedia pages, but there's a good reason why she's so involved. We'll tell you what's behind her story and her unique hobby. Also, a high school football player who received devastating news but did not let it stop him from winning games. Plus, a boy who lost a beloved possession, how a group of co-workers came together to get it back to him all in one piece. And is celebrating Leslie Jordan. Anthony Mason met up with the actor just two weeks before he died tragically and unexpectedly at the age of 67. And they talked about the many ways he put a smile on our faces throughout his career. All that plus our heartwarming videos, the ones you just gotta see. All that's coming up on The Uplift. Hey there, welcome to The Uplift. I'm Tony DeCopo. We are going to kick things off with Wikipedia. A Wikipedia search, in fact, of Jess Wade. She's a physicist who spends her free time researching and writing Wikipedia pages for others. Here's Caitlin O'Kane with her story. Throughout history, female scientists, engineers, and mathematicians have changed the world. But while their accomplishments have been massive, their names and their stories have rarely been publicized. Despite this, physician Jess Wade says she's always been inspired by the great women in STEM who came before her, first by her mom, a physician, then by her colleagues. You know, whilst the number of women professors in a physics department is quite small, you're really aware and you're really inspired by the ones that you get to interact with. So certainly, being surrounded by and, and inspired by women was really important to me discovering who I am as a scientist. When she was a graduate student, Jess met another inspiring woman in STEM, Kim Cobb. You know, she's one of those people you meet and you're just like, how can one person be so awesome? She's actually a, a climate scientist at, at Brown University where she works on kind of trying to understand the impact of humans on climate change. And so when I met her, I thought she is an awesome person and I need to learn more about her. When I did a little um, search, I, I couldn't find any information about her that was in, in kind of one place. You know, what I wanted was to find a Wikipedia page and a Wikipedia page wasn't there. Jess had an idea to start her own unique project, writing Wikipedia pages for diverse people in STEM who don't yet have them. So, so I became really interested in ways that we could try and improve that diversity, but also try and improve the way that we celebrate and honor the incredible scientists who are from historically marginalized backgrounds. So people who are women or people of color or people who are LGBTQ+, who historically have been underrepresented in science, how can we do more to honor them? In her free time, Jess scours the internet to collect information. Then she gets to work writing Wikipedia pages. She's written more than 1,700 so far, and it's shocking to her that none of them had pages before. Kizmeki Corbett, who's the immunologist who developed the way to artificially create spike proteins to create the Moderna mRNA COVID vaccine. If you think about the kind of people who've probably had the most impact on all of our lives in the past two years, Kizzy is, is way up there, right? She's she's world leader in facilitating our return to some kind of normality. But another absolutely amazing person who I thought had a kind of super interesting story that, that wasn't on Wikipedia was a linguist called Elizabeth Sudmeyer, who actually was at the inception of the Central Intelligence Group, which became the CIA. She was there as a woman, as a kind of pioneer in leading the way in doing whatever sophisticated spying technologies America was starting to create and leverage. Jess is making a name for herself in STEM, and she knows she wouldn't be here without those who came before her. You know, Wikipedia is one small part of this, but we all have a role to play in making science a more diverse and a more fair and a more equal place. You know, we know that science is going to provide solutions to the biggest challenges that the world faces. So if you're not going to edit Wikipedia, talk about scientists from historically marginalized groups in your lessons, talk about them with your kids. The sky's the limit. We all have a role to play in, in, in making the world more fair and equal. 
Brant Morgan was an up-and-coming player on his high school football team when he received some truly devastating news, news that changed his life forever. But it didn't stop him from following his dream. Here's CBS News' Steve Overmeyer. I think all my coaches would agree that they didn't think I'd be playing football again. Brant Morgan is a senior at Jericho High School. To appreciate where he is, we need to go back to where his story began two years ago as the JV quarterback. He was like the next up and coming guy and uh, we had a fantastic season. Uh, he, he led us to our first win at Jericho in a couple of years. Then a shadow fell over his bright future. I heard a click while I was in the shower and I look in the mirror and I saw two golf size, probably the size of two golf balls, a size mass popping out of my neck. Within days, the diagnosis was clear. Cancer, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Everything just stopped and I was just in shock. Brent went directly to the hospital and just in time. I got to the emergency room and they found out that my cancer spread from my throat to my chest in less than a week. For the next few months, he would undergo multiple rounds of chemotherapy. I'm stuck here getting poison put into my body. It caused me to lose probably almost 30 pounds. Um, I got neuropathy, which um, you, I lost feeling hips down. While his friends were enjoying the life of a high schooler, Brant spent months relearning how to walk. So now I want you to do it on the inside line. Every wobbly step fueling his desire to return to football. I'm going to do this, I'm going to wake up tomorrow, I'm going to do this, I'm going to wake up the next day, I'm going to work out and I'm going to just transform my body back to not only where it was, but better. He grew stronger, faster, better than before. He didn't just want to come back, he wouldn't stop until he was the starting quarterback, QB1. Quarterback's the leader, the quarter, if, if you don't have a quarterback, you can't have a team. He is the starting quarterback. Absolutely. A role he earned. Absolutely. Well-deserved, well-earned, and uh, plays it well. On this day, Brandt led his team on the field against Oceanside, one of the biggest schools on Long Island. His mother, Abby, is at the edge of the fence of this game that was both inspiring and gut-wrenching. As a mom, is it tough to watch your son getting tackled? Yes. Yes. It's very hard. It's disturbing. But I have to put it back in, again in my head that we, a year ago, he couldn't even do any of this. And a year and a half ago, we were in the hospital. So look at him now. He's on the field. He's living his dream. This is him. This is all he ever wanted. This is Brant Morgan. And I couldn't be prouder. He is my, my QB1 forever. Brant took some shots in this game. <laughs> but nothing hits as hard as cancer, a fact he's reminded of every chemo treatment. Having a good time, like hitting some people on the field, like as hard as it is for some people to watch, like my mom to watch me get hit after everything because I've been hit with a lot worse. And even though it wasn't a win, they had moments to celebrate and reflect on the bigger picture. You're going to go through so many dark times, especially throughout something so crucial like this. Like life is a mindset itself, and I've learned that in so many different ways now that like when I'm facing, like I'm going through a war like I'm going through, I'm still going through, I'm still getting chemo, and I, like, last week I just had a, a dose of chemo. Like, this is one chemo, one more or less, instead of one more, like, sh shoot, I have one more, I'm getting a, I'm getting chemo today, like, all right, that's one less, and then I'm done. Playing four quarters of a game with my brothers, my coaches, and all, like, my family here, like, that's a win itself. It's a win. Coming up, our heartwarming videos, the ones you just got to see, including sweet moments, from two huge celebrities. Stick around, you're watching The Uplift. Next up, when a brother brought a new girlfriend home to meet the family, the family decided to pull a little prank. Take a look. You guys ready for dinner? Yeah, yeah. I'm ready. I'm All right. Beautiful flag of the United States of America. Into the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, I'm ready. Yeah, let's go. Good meat, good Lord, let's eat. I'll start. I, 
it's the little kids that give it away. They're like, what, what is going on? This is not normal. Uh, I think she passed the test. I hope they have a long and happy relationship. All right, take a look at this next video. Uh, it shows eight-year-old Georgie approaching Shaquille O'Neal, courtside at a basketball day event. Big hug there from Shaq. Shaq denied the handshake but brought him in for the big squeeze. Look at that. Very sweet. After seeing Shaq show the love, Steve Harvey, who was also sitting there, well, he decided to come in for a hug, too. Look at that. All right, to our next video, it shows another star, this time Jack Black, at an event to raise funds for a pediatric hospice and palliative care organization or center. Uh, he met a 15-year-old boy there named Abraham, who said he's a big fan of Jack Black's film School of Rock. I am as well. And his favorite part of the movie is when Mr. Black sings. So what did Jack Black do? He got into character and sang the song to Abraham. Uh-huh. And what song does he sing? What song does he sing? Yeah, me. <laughs> That's my favorite movie. Thank you. Uh, yes. Coming up, when a boy left a prized possession behind on an airplane, a group of co-workers came together to rescue it. Plus, that's the possession, by the way. Plus, remembering Leslie Jordan and the many ways he put a smile on our faces throughout his long career. Putting on a smile there. Love of that. When an eight-year-old boy lost a toy while traveling, a group of co-workers came together to make sure that toy was returned and returned in one piece. Here's Chris Van Cleve. Glow Jones has been checking bags at Burbank, California's airport for two decades, but she'd never seen anything like this, a dinosaur the size of a small child. And he's scary looking, but he was really adorable. Eight-year-old Rowan Francois got this guy on vacation with no thought of how to get him home. It's almost as big as me. I thought it was going to break the whole time. So you were worried about it making it home? Yeah. But Southwest Airlines baggage handler Brian Cisneros and his co-workers were determined that wouldn't happen. When I saw it, you know, we locked eyes. And what he saw? A VIP Rex in need of very special treatment. It wasn't in the box, so our concern was taking care of it. We gave it a specific cart by itself, took it to the gates, and when we loaded the dinosaur in the bin, we put it in the center bin, which is by himself. And when it finally got home to Spokane... I would like to show you other, uh, one more thing. A reunion made possible by going the extra mile. All is well that ends well. We're going to introduce you now to a marathon swimmer a marathon swimmer who competes in one of the most difficult sports. And we're talking about only a teenager. Here's Carter Evans with her story. As a child, Maya Marriage used to despise swimming. I hated it, like my least favorite thing to do. I do but now at the wise old age of 15. Oh, man, that is cold. She'll happily dive into the frigid waters off San Francisco Bay, saving lives with each stroke. Over the past six years, I've raised $50,000. The money goes to cancer research. Maya started fundraising when she was nine, <laughs> competing in open water events with Swim Across America. By the time she was 13, she was crossing Lake Tahoe. Last summer, while swimming the 20 miles of open ocean between Catalina Island and California, Maya realized she wasn't alone in the water. I looked to the side and just saw this giant eye. And the entire swim, I thought it was a shark. Wait, you thought there was a shark swimming along with you and you kept going? Yeah. When I Maya think... gets scared or tired, she just thinks of the names on her swim cap, people battling cancer who face a much bigger challenge. I'm swimming for them. I'm doing it for them, and that's why I do these swims. <laughs> Whatever motivates. All right, sweet story there. Coming up, our Anthony Mason spoke to beloved actor Leslie Jordan just weeks before Leslie passed away. And the star opened up to Anthony about the recent resurgence of his career.
Our Anthony Mason spoke to beloved actor Leslie Jordan just weeks before Jordan died, unexpectedly, tragically as well. The star opened up about the recent resurgence of his career. Well, hello, fellow hunker downers. Leslie Jordan had long been a well-known character actor. So it has come to this. Arnon. But the pandemic made him a star. What are y'all doing? This is awful. Ooh, it's exhausting being viral. You like blew up. Give me a good pandemic and I flourish. <laughs> it's still March. How many days? In March, I started posting on Instagram, and I did two posts a day, I think for 80 days. Yeah. And then, I don't know what happened. People have said to me, How, what's the secret? I have no idea. It would jump a million a day. He went from 80,000 followers to nearly six million. What were you thinking at that point? Well, I was just thinking, my gosh, who are these people? <laughs> They want to hear what I have to say. It was just uh, the innocence of it, I guess. For decades, he'd worked steadily as an actor. Okay, Miss Phelan, let's see what you got. Playing Emma Stone's newspaper boss in The Help. And then the black veil was lifted. Starring opposite Lady Gaga in American Horror Story. Karen Walker. I thought I smelled gin and regret. And sparring memorably with Megan Mullally on Will and Grace. Well, well, well. That won him an Emmy. But now that you've got this persona, <laughs> it's like you're in charge of that. Yeah. And sometimes I get tired of that. It's like they'll say, I'll do a take or something. They go, the, where, do, that, do that Leslie Jordan thing. I yeah. said, okay, okay. What and is that it? I can do. <laughs> Whatever that is, I don't know. I was gonna, just, what is it? Well, it's just bright and bubbly. He'd always been that way, growing up in Chattanooga, Tennessee, a popular kid, but with a secret. I was a sissy. You know, I wasn't yeah. good at sports. My dad was a lieutenant colonel in the Army. He's, yeah. He was a man's man, and his you know, group of guys would come home and I'd be twirling a baton in the front yard. Yeah. You know, my mother had taught me. She was a champion baton twirler. And, Daddy, watch me twirl. And my mother even, I told her when I was about 12, she said, I think you'll be subject to ridicule and I couldn't bear that. And so just, why don't, why don't you just live quietly? So here I am. <laughs> <laughs> he caught the acting bug in college at the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. I was not one who did plays in high school or, you know, I was always funny, yeah. but that was to keep the bullies at bay. And I got up in that intro to theater class and it just hit me like a drug. I yeah. mean, I went, yeah. I went to the head of the department and I said, tell me what to do. And he said, well, first let's learn how to pronounce it. It's not theater, <laughs> it's theater. In 1982, Jordan headed out to Hollywood. I got a couple of commercials and and got on a, a kind of a roll with that. I was the pit printing guy. I was the elevator operator to Hamburger Hell for Taco Bell where you go if you don't eat hamburgers. I guess the name just kind of stuck in my head. The TV roles soon followed, from an early part as Candace Bergen's inept secretary on Murphy Brown. Kyle, when they taught you typing in prison, did they mention that the process tends to go faster if you use both hands? Yeah, but Big Eddie only taught us this way. Big Eddie? Mm-hmm. Big Eddie one arm. <laughs> to his latest sitcom, Call Me Cat, with Mayim Bialik. I saw it winking at me in women's petites. And needless to say, I winked back. In Nashville, earlier this month, we watched him at work on a new project. The signs all say Tiny Terror Productions. Is that you? No, no, it's, it ought to be. <laughs> a music video. Ain't no rhyme or wrong tonight. Just so With the country duo Low Cash and Blanco Brown, it was a late and unexpected career turn. When did you decide you wanted to make records? I had a... Uh a Sunday Instagram hymn singing, where we would just sing these old hymns that I grew up with. 
and people started tuning in. And so somehow from that, we decided to make an album. Tempted and tried, we off made to wonder. It seems like you're having a lot of fun with this. Oh my gosh. So unexpected just to happen at, you know, in my 60s. And yeah. I'm a country music singer now. <laughs> I love Nashville and the way that Nashville embraced me, yeah. you know, and to be taken kind of serious yeah. and to have made, you know, an album with Dolly Parton, yeah. Chris Stapleton, yeah. Brandy Carlisle. Yeah. You know, that's, that's something. It sure was. When the trumpets of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more. The last moment we captured with Leslie Jordan, he sang for us with producer Danny Myrick. When the road, when the road is called up yonder. A favorite hymn, When the Roll is Called Up Yonder. I've been baptized 13 times just to make sure, so I'm going to be there. What a life and what a show. I hope it brightened your day, lifted you up. I'm confident it did. And if it didn't, you know what I always say, play it back again. Reruns, totally free. I'm going to go find some good news.